Be a part of the best pro wrestling podcast today by supporting the Going In Raw Patreon. You can enjoy access to the live taping of the show, exclusive merchandise, and patron-only episodes, and so much more. Support Going In Raw today. Click the link in the description. Hey, friendo, Steve here. And Larson. And welcome back to Matt Chat, the premier... I was about to say the premier dating show. The premier debate show of pro the world of pro wrestling right here at youtube.com. Are there other uh, pro wrestling debate programs Probably. on YouTube? Yeah, absolutely. I don't know. I don't know either. I don't know. Um, I don't have time to watch anything else, man. Nor do I. I don't even watch our channel. Nope. Anyways, uh, we're here to do to debate <laughs> topics presented to us, proffered to us by uh, patrons. By our patrons, twenty dollars and up every month. At patreon.com forward slash Stephen Larson, you will then uh, be eligible to have your video. And as long as you, you know, keep it under 45 seconds and uh, don't use uh, offensive language or whatever. Anyways, you guys know the drill. We have our good friendos, our good patrons sending us video questions and then me and Larson debate them. It's great. It's also uh, available on great podcast apps out there in the world, including the iOS podcast app. Leave us a rating or a review. Yeah, it's a great way to help support Going In Raw. We're also at Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Stephen Larson. I already mentioned that. That's where you can chip in the $20 to get your video question up here on Matt Chat. We're also on Pro Wrestling Tees, Pro Wrestling Tees.com. Look at that guy. Oops. What a great looking shirt. Yeah, I love it. This is a Pro Wrestling Gorilla shirt. Yes. Not pro wrestling t-shirt no uh anyways we, uh, we've got some great questions in from friendos we we're on the road to the royal rumble larson we are which is of course the start of the road to wrestlemania that's correct this is sort of the footpath to wrestlemania well i guess it's like the, the it's like the street it's like the, the frontage the, road that, that, that the will frontage us, road yeah frontage road All that's right. usually the road that runs parallel to the freeway oh, okay it's right on. Frontage it's road. like Folsom and 50 not quite okay. usually like if you go up 99 i think there's just literally a road called Frontage Road. Oh, interesting. That runs parallel to the freeway. Anyways, okay. eventually that frontage road will collide with the freeway. Oh, and that yeah. junction yeah. is the Royal Rumble. Oh, I like the old road in LA. The old road. It eventually yeah. just turns into I freeway. Think, something like that. Yeah. Anyways, uh, yeah. So uh, lots of great questions. You know, we got this past Raw, anyways, was a, a pretty packed show. We got the emergence of Balor Club. SmackDown wasn't so packed. No, it was not. But uh, our first question coming to us from Adam Mayhem uh, poses an interesting question about Balor Club. Let's yes. see what Adam Mayhem has to say. What I started this from the University Bienvenidos to another edition of Chit Chat. Wait. The champ wearing my merch. So go to Pro Wrestling Tees and buy my merch. Anyways, guys, here's a quick question. And I want you to debate this. Just don't think about the fact that it, its name is Ballard Club. But if AJ Styles were to join with Finn Balor and Carl Anderson and Luke Gallows and form their club, who should be in WWE? Who should be the leader? Either Finn Balor or AJ Styles, and why? Take it easy, guys. Thank you, Adam Mayhem. What's his Pro Wrestling T store? Adam Mayhem 22? I don't remember. Did Was Adam Mayhem 1 through 21 already taken? Maybe. Maybe. You think there's 21 Adam Mayhems out there? Could be. Who are wrestlers? Possibly. Wow. Wouldn't surprise me. Anyways, um, good question. The answer, obviously, is AJ Styles. AJ Styles would... At, are, there, this isn't even a question. AJ I know Styles, it's not a question. AJ, listen to me. AJ Styles would absolutely be leader of, and it wouldn't be called Balor Club anymore. They'd have to call it something else. I mean, they'd what, either, they call it Styles Club. The club. They call it Styles Club. They call it, yeah, absolutely. Um, they'd rename it. They just call it the club. That would be the awkward part because they're all friends. So it's like, hey, now that I'm here, we can't call it Balor Club anymore. We couldn't do that. But it'd be AJ Styles. Why? Number one. WWE champion currently had a long reign with it. Yeah. Balor was universal champion. The first universal champion. He didn't even have it for 24 hours before he had to give it up because he busted his shoulder during that amazing match with Seth Rollins. Um, so AJ Styles by far is the more decorated person. Did Balor start bullet club? Yes. However, who brought it to true prominence? AJ Styles. Kenny Omega. That's who did it. He had it before Kenny. 
um, who brought in Kenny Omega to Bullet Club, AJ Styles. That's right. Um, he was IWGP heavyweight champion, and he held that title with prestige, whereas Finn Balor could only, you know, say, I'm the best junior wrestler in the world. Well, AJ was best you know, senior you're just wrestler about, in the world. You're just talking about stuff that happened in New Japan. Well, let's no, let's look at WWE. Look at AJ Styles. What did I say? He's he delivered according to WWE the best WWE match of 2017. His fight against John Cena at the Rumble. Um, he puts on time and time again the best matches in WWE. Brock Lesnar, Jinder Mahal. He actually brought Jinder Mahal to a good match. Nobody else has ever been able to do that. AJ Styles is a wrestling machine. He's a wrestling god. Absolutely. If they came to SmackDown, AJ Styles would then take the reins. He said, he'd say, I got this. And he would take over as leader. Take club to new heights. Take no. the, he'd call him the B club. No, that doesn't sound good. No, that sounds bad. The A club for AJ. There you go. That's better, <laughs> I guess. You don't want to call it the B club. The A it, club sound sounds like the terrible, B team. too. <laughs> Here's the thing. Thanks. If you want Balor Club, the club, to be real, <laughs> there's only one leader, and that's Finn Balor okay. because he is real. Okay. You got to explain that for people who aren't, you know, what? explain the width and breadth of real. Well, I mean, like in New Japan, he was the real rock and roller. That was his thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, Bullet Club is real. <laughs> that was his thing. This can't be your entire argument. No, it's not. It's not. Um, you brought up history in New Japan, so I might as well expound upon it. Yeah, AJ was in, in New Japan for what three years, two years? No, I think two years. Two years, and yeah, he won the the IWGP Heavyweight Championship. Finn Balor was in uh, New Japan a lot longer than that. Won a ton of titles. Won Best of Super Juniors several times. Um, he never claimed IWGP Heavyweight Championship. He won the Junior Heavyweight Championship, but but he did have matches against Tanahashi, uh, Nakamura. Over there in New Japan, he faced heavyweight competition. He founded Bullet Club, first leader. One could argue, best leader. Ooh. You know, he. he uh, you, I don't think you give AJ or even for that matter, uh, Kenny Omega the sole credit for bringing Bullet Club to prominence. I think the rise of Bullet Club uh, has happened in conjunction with the rise of New Japan. Sure, Kenny has a lot to do with that. His match against Okada brought a lot of new eyeballs um, to New Japan, but their marketing team over there is just done a much better job recently than they did in 2013 when, I believe, Balor founded Bullet Club. It was real. <laughs> Since uh, Prince Devitt, Finn Balor, <laughs> signed with WWE, he's the longest reigning NXT champion True. ever. True. Uh, first universal champion. Who knows how long he would have held that belt had he not injured his shoulder early on in his match against Seth Rollins. Despite that injury, he finished the match, put on an awesome match. With basically one arm. You can't question his toughness. It is real. You're, see, you're, you're trying to use this one episode to completely murder that joke. No, I'm getting it over. So, uh, yeah, he was out, what, eight months? Came back to Raw after Mania. Made a huge splash. Uh, he hasn't got a, his, his uh, rematch for Universal title yet. Um, I, don't th I think because they don't want to feed him the Lesnar quite yet. Yeah. Um, I'm hoping uh, him, now that he's got... Balor Club at his side. He'll go to the, to the Rumble, win the Rumble, uh, somehow be told you can't challenge the Universal title. And so he says, I want to challenge for the WWE title. Beat AJ at Mania for the WWE Championship. And after that, AJ says, all right, Finn, you're better. You're real. <laughs> I'm going to join Balor Club okay. as your number two, okay. as your, your second in command, all your right. Riker. Yeah. I'll be Riker to your Picard. AJ Styles remains the ace of SmackDown Live, yes. but he is number two to Finn Balor. Yeah, because why? Because he's real. Finn Balor is real. Um, you know what you also could have said here? You could have actually uh, talked about AJ's lack of judgment in bringing in Jeff Jarrett to Bullet Club because that happened on his true. watch very as true. well. I mean, I can't think. Like, when was Bone Soldier brought into Bullet Club? That was Kenny's watch. Oh, okay. Yeah, he was, AJ was already gone. Yeah. Because, yeah, at the at the New Japan Rumble, I think Captain New Japan was still in it. So yeah. he didn't become Bullet Club, I think, until after that. Yeah, I don't know who showed up on uh, on AJ's watch besides Jeff Jarrett. <laughs> I'm sure plenty of people did. Maybe Chase Owens. Big name. 
I don't know. Anyways. Anyways, it's Finn Balor. It's his club. Oh, man, it's AJ. He started. The man. He is the man behind the genesis of Bullet Club, which, of course, uh, is what Balor Club is trying to be, but they can't use the words Bullet Club. Yeah, that's true. Good for us, too, because like we can't have bullets in our titles for YouTube because no. it will get demonetized. Yeah. We'll get demonetized. So the answer is Finn Balor. Demonetization. Finn Balor. Demonetization is real. Real. All right, next up. Uh, oh, good question. So, coming up. Uh, not only is the men's Royal Rumble taking place at the pay-per-view labeled Royal Rumble. There is a, it's a rumble for all. The women's Royal Rumble is happening uh, also at that pay-per-view dubbed Royal Rumble. And uh, always a question as to what should be placed where on the, the card. Rumble. Yes. Generally speaking, I forget uh, the Royal Rumble itself. Usually is the main event. Usually is the last thing to go yeah. on. Yeah. <clears throat> so Stevie Bradley has a question about that. Let's turn it over to Stevie Bradley. Hey, friendos, it's Stevie B here with a Matt Chat question. Been wondering, placement of the Rumble matches, should the women's match be immediately before the men's match? Or, to get everyone's anticipation going, should the women's match be the first match on the main card for the Rumble, then all the matches, and then the men's uh, Rumble I personally think the women's match should be first to get everyone all hyped up. What are your thoughts? Thanks, guys. Too sweet. Thank you, Stevie Bradley. Thank you, Stevie Bradley. Um, there's one right answer here, and it should be the main event. Wow. It really huge, should be. Huge. Um, I understand uh, his idea about kicking the show off uh, with a, a major match to get the crowd into it. Mm -hmm, um, they typically do that with something that's, that's uh, got a lot of action, fast-paced, and they can still do that. Um, if they start out with the Usos versus Gable and Benjamin best two out of three falls match, mm -hmm. that'll be fast paced. I'll have a lot of action. I'll get the crowd into the show immediately. Yep. Um, considering how badly WWE bungled the historic nature of the women's money, the bank match at the money, the bank pay-per-view back in June, uh, they need to make up for that. Okay. What better way to do that than to close the show with the women's rumble? Mm -hmm. Um, they face a potential issue with the men's rumble if they book Roman Reigns to win. Do they want to end another show with Roman Reigns standing in the middle of the ring in Philadelphia getting booed? Mm -hmm. Probably not. Mm -hmm. So here's what I suggest. Uh, last four matches. WWE title, AJ versus Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. Next, men's rumble. Next, Lesnar versus Strowman versus Kane. Finally, women's rumble. Build it up. Uh, have Oscar come in at ten. When does the SmackDown tag match have the two out of three falls match? It up? opens the show. Oh, you, is that what you said? Okay, yeah. Sorry. Have the women's rumble close the show. Really play up the historic nature of it. Play it up as 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 Oscar's not quite coronation as top woman in all of WWE, but close. It's the first step towards that, which will happen at WrestleMania. Have her come in at like ten or twelve. And eliminate, I don't know, a dozen people. Mm -hmm. And also, like you know, like uh, we, we did some counting. And there seems to be about 18 women um, in the women's division between Raw and SmackDown. <clears throat> Assuming that the women's titles are defended, both of them are, at the show. That will be in the Rumble. Um, there's 12 open spots. There's a chance for a lot of interesting and exciting surprise entrants. Um, and every year for the men, usually we, we, we anticipate... A lot of interesting surprise entrants. Usually we're disappointed because it usually doesn't happen. Most of them are nostalgia acts that are eliminated within two minutes of entering the ring. Right. But if you have, you can have some of that. You can have Lita or Trish Strass. Someone comes out, get a pop, get the crowd excited. But is it a real contender to win? But what if Kyrie Sane shows up? Shayna Baszler. Someone like that. Hey, have you been watching those little uh, iPhone videos I've been doing? No, with I the, heard about that. That She's been wrecking. Uh, it's been fun. It's been It's been such a great way to build. Her character, mm -hmm. who is just apparently a dick. Mm -hmm. <laughs> She'll just sneak into a ring while somebody's practicing and just put somebody in a headlock and everybody will freak out. <laughs> it's great. Anyways, continue. Anyways, um, there's, I, I, I feel like there's a lot more potential avenues to generate some genuine buzz and excitement with the women's rumble as opposed to the men, men's rumble. Because <clears throat> even if Roman doesn't win, who else is a, a legit contender? Mm -hmm. Nakamura, which the, the you know hardcore wrestling fans will really like. But I don't really know if he has momentum coming into this match that's gonna is gonna make the mat the the rumble win 
feel huge for him. Yeah. Um, there's two. There's two people that I think that would actually accomplish, and I think Nakamura is one of them. I do think that the Philly I think crowd, it's Nakamura Balor. The only two. It's that Nakamura Balor. Yeah, the only two that exactly might be the case. Is. Yeah. Balor has momentum right now oh, with time, the, yeah. the 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 formation of Balor Club, but I don't know if Nakamura does. He just. I think he would get a pop because people love Nakamura. But I just don't feel like he has the momentum. I don't know if it's, I don't I don't know I, if if I do a power rankings right now of who I think would win Nakamura would probably be based on momentum fifth. You know how they do it. They, they, it would have to be it would have to be Nakamura and at least three the final four would have to be Nakamura and three guys that people really wouldn't want. It'd have to be Nakamura, Reigns, Orton, Orton Reigns, and Cena. Then, yeah, Cena. Oh my God! If Nakamura eliminated them, they would be so relieved he would get a massive pop. It's sort of like last year when they had Orton uh, eliminate Reigns last because no one won Reigns. Right, exactly. Anyway. Yeah. But I feel like there's a lot. There's a lot more. There could be more of a sense of unpredictability. But at the same time, there's in terms of who en- enters the Rumble. Same time, a sense of inevitability in terms of Oscar winning the match. Say, have her come in the first. 10 or 12, face some obstacles, eliminate a ton of competitors, have her win. Great moment to close the Royal Rumble. Main event, Women's Rumble. Here's why I like putting it on first. Um, I don't, I actually don't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind it being the, the main event. I think it'd be great. I think you're right. They do need to sort of have a little bit of a makeup for the uh, Women's Money in the Bank match. The, the aspect of it that you mentioned in terms of, uh, uh, all the spots going to nostalgia acts, NXT personalities. You know, th- there's so many open spots still available. I think that lends itself to kicking off the show with a lot of excitement. I mean, yeah, the tag match is what it is. It's going to be a good match. But I think kicking it off with the Women's Rumble and so many unknown names, so many unknown sort of personalities coming through, I think does lend it. I'll, I'll, I'll say this: if Ronda Rousey's going to be there, it needs to be in the main. It needs to be the main event. Has to be. If she's not there, it brings down the mainstream crossover thing that they're going to want for it. You know that Ronda Rousey's going to yeah, bring yeah. to it. And so I think it would warrant it going on first, kicking it off like in, in a big way. Um, here's here's what I think could be kind of interesting about it going on first is that if Oscar wins it. And Alexa Bliss defends a title, which apparently it doesn't look like it's going to happen. But it would be kind of cool to have Alexa Bliss defend the title at the Rumble. Asuka could then show up during that match as sort of a, ooh, this is kind of cool moment. Have I a th- face-off at the least. Yeah, yes. exactly. So to make the Rumble win even bigger, to make it more prevalent in the minds of the fans, um, you know, just how much of, uh, of this really matters. Um, I think that could be a lot of fun. But I think just given the unpredictable nature of how many open spots, I mean, let's face it, the men's rumble is going to have much fewer surprises than the women's rumble by nature of, you know, last night Rusev Day announced that they're both going to be in the rumble. It wouldn't surprise me if Fandango was in the rumble. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, uh, Breezango was in the rumble. And so you're going to get like tag teams in the rumble, which is fine. It's just I think, and by nature of the fact that there are so many people, you know, already on the roster in the men's division across the board, you know, yeah, we'll see a couple of NXT guys. Um, but I doubt there's going to be that many, you know, surprise entrants from the past in the mm-hmm. men's rumble, as mm-hmm. opposed to the women's rumble. Mm-hmm. I think we're going to see a couple more. And plus the NXT women's division, we're going to see a bunch of those iconic duo. They're going to get a big pop. Um, and so I think kicking off the show with something that's a bit more unpredictable, a bit more, uh, uh, you know, exciting, I think, uh, would probably benefit the, the show overall. But on top of that, what you said about Asuka being kind of the one who, if it's, let's be, let's be honest, if it's, if Asuka doesn't win, it's going to be kind of disappointing. It's going to feel like a letdown a bit. Yeah. And so if she does win, it'll just, it'll like meet expectations. Well, I think, and is I, that how you want to leave your show? Is well, that how you want to I think, I think it's not just, if she wins, it'll meet expectations. Is how she wins. Yeah, that's true too. But at the end of the day, you know, the the final image you see is the the, the Rumble winner, you know, yeah. standing tall. And if you're leaving your pay per view not on a pleasant surprise, which at this point we have no idea who's going to win the men's Rumble. I mean, I hope it's not Roman Reigns, but it could very well be Roman well, it's Reigns. Be, it's going to be Randy Orton. Oh, that's right. It's going to be Randy Orton. I'm sorry. Yeah, that'd be terrible. Um, but if they give us a Finn Balor or a Nakamura victory, um, people are going to leave. They're no, I'd be turning off like super hyped. Yeah. 
Um, Oscar at this point is just kind of she's gonna meet expectations, and if it's not her, if it's somebody else, it's, even if it's like Nia Jax, it's gonna be like, okay, well, that's cool, you know. Yeah, a lot of it depends on who's penciled in to win. Yeah, yeah. So, anyways. Uh, next up, uh, oh, so uh, Jeff Hardy. We have a question about Jeff Hardy, and it's coming to us from Daryl the Cat Takahashi. Let's see what he has to say. What's good, Stephen Larson? Many friendos out there. It's Cat Daryl Takahashi. My question for Matt Jeff this week is, we all know that Matt Hardy is doing the broken slash woken gimmick and feuding with Bray Wyatt. So my question this week is, when Jeff Hardy comes back from his injury, would he be served better in the WWE doing the brother Nero gimmick working with Matt Hardy and trying to elevate the broken slash woken gimmick? Or would he be served better in the WWE doing his own thing and doing a solo's run? Thanks, boys. Thank you, the cat. Yes. Here's the thing about the Woken Matt Hardy thing. They need to go, for it to be successful, they need to go all in on it. They need Rebby doing the live music intro. They need Maxel. They need Senor Benjamin. And yes, a big part of it, even if it's just in the short term, upon his return, they need Brother Nero. And then at a certain point, he can go off and do his own thing. But when he comes back, they need to make this way. If they really want to sell merch, if they really want to make this a big deal, and they seem to be on the path to making it a big deal, they need everybody all hands on deck. So that means bring Brother Nero in. And then maybe when it's time for him to, to do his solo thing, Maybe they then go and I mean, hey, you know, you bring Brother Nero in, you could be looking at because I don't think I don't think Matt Hardy as Woken Matt Hardy is. I don't think putting a title on him is necessary. I don't think you need to do that, and I don't think they're going to do that. However, well, they might. However, maybe the tag titles. Maybe they, they can make it interesting with the tag titles. Brother Nero, Woken Matt Hardy, do that. Um, but yeah, when he comes back from injury, he's got to be Brother Nero. And then, you know, eventually, he's like, Matt, Jeff Hardy doesn't age. He doesn't age. Oh, he does. And as Brother Nero, no, he doesn't. As Brother Nero. I mean, as, as we get each year, he does get a year older. He might not look like he's right. getting older, but he's getting older. I think he ages backwards. I think he looks He's not younger. Benjamin Button. I think he's Benjamin Button. Um, and the thing about Jeff Hardy is that he ages slower than everybody else, physically speaking. That's scientifically accurate. Um Anyways, as Brother Nero, he doesn't have to be doing the high-risk stuff because it's all, like, character-based stuff. Um, yeah, so he can be Brother Nero. And then uh, he can go back doing the high-risk extreme stuff on his own. Vince loves that stuff. After, you know, a six-month reign or a six-month run as Brother Nero with the Woken Man Hardy thing. No. Absolutely. How can you even argue that he's this not going to be? This is what ha- needs to happen. He needs to debut as Itchweed. Oh, my god. In WWE. Oh, dear. That's the answer. Oh. I'm kidding. As soon as he comes back, Vince is going to say, Jeff Hardy, we're going to get you back on the path I had originally for you. You're going to be a main event star again. It's going to be 2009 all over again. Top merch seller. Vying for world titles. That's what's going to happen. No, Vince, man. Vince loves himself some Jeff Hardy in the Everybody main event. Everybody loves Jeff Hardy, but he's not. There's too many. The main event is too crowded. There's no room for Jeff Hardy Send there. them to SmackDown. Separate Matt and Jeff on the brands, different brands. Jeff can be immediately an impact player on SmackDown. Immediately. Imagine the matches he'd have with AJ Styles, Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn. Oh, they're not going to separate them from brands. They travel together. They still could. Matt can just join him on the road. Anyways, Jeff Hardy, I feel like, and it might not happen immediately. He's in line for a singles solo. Uh, it's redundant. Push. I feel like. Okay. We heard for a while Vince <laughs> wanted Jeff Hardy to challenge Brock Lesnar for the universal title at some point in the end of 2017. Didn't happen because Jeff Hardy got hurt. I don't know why Vince would suddenly change his mind about thinking Jeff Hardy is a main event caliber talent. Yeah, you know, you, I, you see the evidence in 2009 when he was challenging. <laughs> that was almost 10 years ago. John Cena for be the top merch seller in all WWE. Yeah, man, that was 10 years ago. I don't, I don't People even love know nostalgia. It's hell of a drug, Steve. Yeah, I don't even know why. If, if that was true, I'm kind of tenuous on that. I mean, I understand that Jeff Hardy, like Vince, I could totally understand why Vince McMahon thinks Jeff Hardy's a big star. He's a big star. 
Why you would ever thought that he can come back and be a universal champion contender, that boggles my mind. There's just too much talent. There are too many people that could have that title. Braun, Smojo, Brock Lesnar, Roman Reigns, Finn Balor, freaking AJ Styles if he ever goes raw, which I don't think is going to happen. No. There is, I was just waiting in NXT, Drew McIntyre, Adam Cole, Bebe, uh, freaking Eric Young, uh, Killian Dane. But here's the thing about Jeff Hardy. Granted, sample size is from nearly 10 years ago. Yes. But they have a sample size that says Jeff Hardy can draw money. Because he's done it before. Yeah, man. I don't know. I just, I think that, look, this Woke and Matt Hardy thing, I think, can can be really, really entertaining. But you need everybody there. You need them all, all hands on deck. Short term, maybe. uh, But more than six months. Two months. Six months. You can still have a normal, regular Jeff Hardy at the compound playing playing a, 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 a more grounded foil. To Matt Hardy. And here's the thing, too, is that I actually think Jeff Hardy, just given how he reacted all that stuff, I think he actually really enjoys doing that stuff. Oh, probably. I think he I think he gets a legit kick out of his brother being broken Matt Hardy, and I think that he just likes being a part of that. I just get that feeling. No, I, I get that feeling, too. And but, watching him... But hit, if Vince oh, wants to oh. make money off Jeff Hardy, he'll give him a solo Here's push. the most important, but you, do you know what version of Matt of Jeff Hardy I like best? Willow. Uh, no. Itchweed. No. Uncle Jeff. Oh, yeah. Whenever Matt brings in Maxel, right, to do anything, and you'd always look at who Maxel is preoccupied by and with. It's Jeff. It's, it's always Jeff. And it's the cutest goddamn thing I've ever seen. Because Jeff Hardy, right, is a big star, but Matt's doing his weird thing. <laughs> Meanwhile, Jeff is like, you know, I got to keep this kid from getting, you know, how kids, especially yeah, 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 toddlers, yeah. Yeah. they get so, you know, they're just antsy all the time. Yeah, yeah. And Jeff is always the one who's like, you know, playing with Max while his dad. Yes. And that is what Jeff's role should be, Uncle Jeff Hardy, to just hang out with Max. All right. Well, he because still, I think that's cute as hell. He doesn't need to be Brother Nero then. He could be just Jeff Hardy and still accomplish it's that. the same And thing. get his own solo push. It's the same thing. Anyways, next up. Uh, let's see here. Oh, we have a question about theme music. Yeah. From our friendo, the AO Worm. Let's see what he has to say. Hey, everybody. What's going on? It's your boy AO Worm here back with another video question. So, guys, so since I've been watching New Japan, I realized they had a lot of good theme song music, like Naito's theme song sounds like you hear it at a, at a rave, and then Okada sounds like you can hear it at an anime, on an anime theme song. So, who has better theme music? WWE or New Japan Pro Wrestling? And then Power Rank the top five theme songs in wrestling today. Past, present, future, all that. And go. Thank you, A.O. Worm. Oh, man. Oh, wait, I go first, yeah, don't I? Yeah, you go first, yeah. Oh, New Japan has better music. The best theme in all of pro wrestling belongs to Minoru Suzuki. When uh, that song hits Such the crescendo. A mark for Suzuki, man. When that song hits his crescendo yeah. and the entire audience sings along, I challenge anybody not to get goosebumps. And it's even better because the song doesn't seem to fit Minoru Suzuki in the least. And yet he asks... The singer to write him a song, and that's what happened. It was it's magic, Steve, and that's just one of several great New Japan theme songs. I'll list more: Kenny Omega, Kazuchika Okada, Evil, uh, Taguchi, um, uh, all that stuff. Rocky Romero has done Rapongi Vice's theme, yeah, Rapongi 3K's theme. There's I could go on. The list is Naito's theme. Try not to dance on that, that beat drop, Steve. It's too fast for me, man. It's too fast. You like to slow dance? Yeah, I like to slow dance a little I like bit. like to sway a little bit? <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Nah. Yeah. yeah. I, I like, like to I move grind. my feet. I like to grind. I like to get my hips moving. I like to grind. Oh, okay. I like the booty right here. So you'd prefer, I guess, Rapongi 3K. It's just got a steady beat. Yeah, exactly. A slow exactly, beat. Exactly, yeah. Oh, no. Grills of Destiny. Another great one. Oh, that's even better. And yeah. who can forget the classic bullet club? club? Okay. Hold on. I'm not done yet. Oh, my God. It's all about New Japan's music. It's great. I just want to belt out Suzuki's theme right now, but I won't because you're tired of me singing it. Yeah. Now you can go. All right. After this, what's going on there? What? I uh, just had a little thing. You got an eyelash on your face? There's a character in Godless who keeps on having to dab his eyeball. You. Because he tears up a lot. It's pretty Is great. Is a pink eye or something? Uh, no, I think he just has like a leaky eye. Oh, okay. Um, Anyways, after you present your uh, position, we got a power rank. Uh, Top five themes currently. Anyways, continue. All right. Well, here's the thing. In the history of wrestling, in the history of pro wrestling theme songs, mm-hmm. three of the top four belong to, were created by 
Jim Johnston. Mm -hmm. Okay. We're talking about D Generation X. Yeah. Stone Cold Steve Austin. All right. And Jericho. Chris Jericho yes. break the walls down. The fourth was created by somebody at WCW and it's the NWO theme song. That's actually probably the greatest theme song in the history of music. That's probably the greatest song in the history of music now that I think about it. The fifth greatest theme song of all time is probably Bullet Club. It's fantastic. Well, Minoru Suzuki is way better than Bullet no, Club. No, really it is. isn't. It is not. Um, so New Japan doesn't even occupy any, like, they, they occupy okay. one spot in the top five. That's like your opinion, man. No, that's that's etched in stone. No. That's etched in stone. I'll be honest with you. If you played five songs that all kind of sound like Naito's theme song, I probably wouldn't know which one is which. I know for it's a not fact. It's not iconic. Hogwash. It's not iconic. Okada's theme song isn't iconic. Kenny's is iconic. I do like that. But isn't it just like the Terminator theme song or something? No. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. No, that's good. That's good. I like Kenny's. It's good. Not really top 20 for top wrestling theme no, songs. Suzuki's number one. It's not, though. It is. It's great. It's really Really not. pay attention to it. Read the lyrics. I liked Shibata came out to like the most mellow. Like the intro was like yeah. the most mellow thing. But then it kicks in. Look, New Japan has some good theme songs. I'm wrong. Like you said, Rapongi Vice. That's a great theme song because they talk about going to getting some McGriddles at the McDonald's in Japan. They talk about that. That's good stuff. Um but come on, it's, dude, it's WWE. And especially look at what CFO Dollar Sign is doing right now. Alice, oh my God, Alistair Black. Oh man, top theme song of all time. Look at Undisputed Era. That was supposed to be a temporary theme, but it's so good even in temporary you form. You don't believe that. That it's top theme song. Drew McIntyre's. That, that, used literally, be, that used to be Roderick Strong's theme. Oh, Roderick Strong is original theme. <laughs> it was great because Drew McIntyre's now. It's great. Oh, uh, Oscar's theme song. They're all good songs, but none of them are as good as Minoru Suzuki's. Theme. Oh, they're all better. They're CFO dollar sign. <laughs> they are a freaking. And now they're taking all of Jim Johnson's old crap and making it even better. That's so rude that they're doing. I know. <laughs> That's so rude that they're doing that. Um, but look at what they're doing. I mean, it's man. It's they're so good. Every time there's like a new wrestler debuts, I'm like, oh, I want to hear his theme song. It's probably so good. Um, Ember Moon. Tell me, you're, you don't. Know, you know, it's you're a good not song. you're doing your back workout. You pop on some Ember Moon theme good, song, but I can listen to Minoru Suzuki's theme on a loop for an hour and a half while I work out and feel inspired to put up as much iron as possible. I don't think you can. I can. If it was on Spotify, I would. Anyways, but it's, it's not. The answer is completely and totally Dude, WWE, wrestling. man. Okay, Power Rank Larson top five. Number one, Minoru Suzuki's theme. You're not gonna let go of that, so fine. I'm not. I get two through Persistence five. Persistence pays off. Two. No, you don't get two through five. You get two, three, and four. I get five. Fine. NWO Stone Cold Steve. No, Austin. he says today. Today. Oh, today. Yeah. Oh man. Uh, so let's I think see. he said today. Oh, you know whose theme song is actually really good? They played at the Kings game the other day because there are a bunch of wrestling marks over there. Yeah. Uh, Seth Rollins theme song. Yeah, it's, it's all right. Oh, it's good, man. Do -do 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 -do. Oh, the, sanity. The double bass drums are good. Yeah. Sanity because it's just uh, it's Primus. Yeah. It's just Primus. Man, I don't know. There's so many good Oscars. Oscars is really good. Oscars is really good. Nakamura's um, is good. Nakamura's is really good. Bobby Roode's is really good. Alistair Black's is really good. Um, you have to choose three of those four. Well, any, any of them will do. And then, you know, you got Randy Orton's iconic theme song. That's a terrible theme song. Uh, Kevin Owens is really good. Sami Zayn. They're all really good. I'm going to say, I'll just say this. I'll say Alistair Black, Oscar. And uh, and Nikki Cross the Sanity theme. Oh, those, are the, those are the three best right now. Number five. But those aren't even man. Those aren't even the best. There's so many good ones. I'll, I'll go with Bullet Club because it's iconic. Oh, it's the best. But number one is Minoru Suzuki's theme. All right, sounds good. Oh, it's incredible. Wah, wah, wah. Here, I'm listening to it in my head right now. I, I don't goosebumps. even know what it is. I don't even know it. I heard it yesterday and it immediately left my head. Oh my gosh. Not inspiring. It's completely inspiring. Very not good. Oh my gosh. Next up. Uh, let's see here. Oh, what a great question here. Somebody, one of our good friendos, Ron Petzl, was, I think it's his name. Ron, it's Ron. Mm -hmm. I think his last name is Petzl. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't remember being said, hey, Ron. Do you think Ron's ever thought about opening a pretzel shop? Petzl's pretzels? Or just Ron's pretzels. <laughs> 
There you go. And they'd be like, what's your name, Ron Petzl? Are you serious? That's your name? It's a license to print money, Ron. Give me a break. Anyways, Ron was watching some 2002 era WWE. Yes. What a classic era. The very beginning. Like, Good the stuff. End of the Attitude Era. Beginning going of into the Ruthless Aggression Ruthless era. Aggression loaded with talent. One of our personal favorite talents. He talks about Eddie Guerrero. Yes. Let's see what he has to say. Hello, friendos. Steven Larson. Happy 2018. This is Ron. And I'm bringing you uh, the first of 2018 Matt Chat questions that I have for you. Now, the other night, I spent a little bit of time watching some 2002 uh, SmackDown and Raw. It was a Thanksgiving special, and I got to see some incredible matches, some god-awful storylines. I mean, Stephanie's starting to bud and become the queen bee that she is. Uh, but I got to see aggressive Brock Lesnar. I got to see Chris Benoit before, you know. And I also got to see some Eddie Guerrero work, which then brought me to my question. With AJ Styles being as good as he is today, in your guys' opinion, who is the better wrestler? Is it Eddie Guerrero or AJ Styles? Two sweet guys, and thanks for listening. Thank you, Ron. Uh, the answer is uh, Eddie Guerrero. Uh. Here's the thing. Here's the thing about Eddie Guerrero top-notch wrestler if you just look at wrestling product look at halloween havoc 1997 right with the the premier cruiserweight in the land ray mysterio jr eddie guerrero put on one of the best matches we've ever seen in wcw like bar none this match is absolutely insane it transcends space and time somebody could put this match on in new japan or cmll today and they'd be like whoa five stars five and three quarter stars right so we know Eddie can hang not just with the cruiserweights. Eddie later in his life obviously became a heavyweight star, right? Putting on amazing matches with names like Chris Benoit, probably like Jericho Angle. I don't know if you do JBL. With. JBL. Oh, Blood Bass. Blood Bass with JBL. Brock Lesnar. It's been a while since I've watched that era of SmackDown or uh, yeah, WWE. But uh, he was so he was a wrestling machine, right? So he's got that on lock. The one thing that he has that AJ doesn't have is a next level personality and character. I love AJ Styles. I think he's the man. He's great. He gets on the mic and he seems very sincere. He seems like a legitimately good guy. We interviewed him. Class act. Eddie's character, though, was a fictionalized version of himself, I think. And he played this character with expert, right? Expert comedic timing, expert dramatic chops, expert passionate, passionate promo guy, right? He had everything in terms of his fictionalized Eddie Guerrero character that made him compelling must-see TV. So not only is he, is he an AJ Styles level wrestler, he takes one of the best characters and most underrated characters in the history of the business, he adds that to the game. Nobody, he was, he was the best. Eddie was the best. So give me Eddie Guerrero. I can't really argue against that because Eddie's probably one of my 10 favorite wrestlers ever. Oh, man. One thing he didn't mention is his versatility. He could oh. do heel and face oh, yeah. equally as well. Oh, yeah, absolutely. He was incredibly versatile in terms of his character work, in terms of his in-ring work. Eddie was the best. His When you see, sorry, when you see his stuff with China, mm -hmm. when she was his mama Sita, she seemed genuinely, that's one reason it worked so well, because she, she seemed genuinely tickled by his charisma and uh, his personality. Yeah. It's AJ, though. i got to stick with AJ because okay. that's the point of view that uh, that's the position I was given, so I have to argue it. For the sake of argument, <laughs> I will say AJ Styles. All right. Um, Eddie and AJ are probably equals in the ring. Um, uh, for Maybe for today's wrestling, AJ uh, employs a bit more of the striking, which is popular because of the MMA. Um, so he's got that advantage. In terms of character work, I can't really argue against Eddie. He was one of the most versatile performers in the history of the business. He could do it all and do it all really well. Um, AJ can, uh, but you, talk, you touched on uh, AJ being coming off as such a good guy. And maybe we really feel strongly about that because we got, had the opportunity, thankfully, to meet him. Uh, and he came across as a genuine, decent fellow. 
And so maybe for us, it was hard to buy him as a heel because, you know, we'd shook his hand and, and talked with him a little bit. Um, but I also think that speaks to the power of his performance in the ring and him as a person that he tried as uh, tried to be a heel and the crowd wouldn't let him. They said, no, we love you. We love your work so much that we're not going to we, we can't bring it bring ourselves to boo you. We can't do it. You can say all the you know, you can talk down to us. Uh, 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 berate us, insult us, doesn't matter. We're still going to cheer for you because you're the best in the business right now. Um, uh, so I don't, I don't know if, if 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 that speaks to his ability to be a heel because I don't. I, it wasn't like he wasn't trying. He was throwing Shane McMahon through a car window. That's a heel, and he did it well. But I think just he's so good. The era of wrestling now is so different where people don't necessarily buy into the kayfabe aspect of character as much as they used to. If they see you put on phenomenal performances week after week in the ring and they appreciate your work, they are going to cheer for you regardless of what you do in character. There's one thing that AJ Styles has that – and I mean, honestly, like to, like to break down the question, there really is no right answer. No. I mean, who do you like better? God, how do you pick? You know, it's, yeah. it's, they're two gods of wrestling. AJ Styles – might be the technical equal of Eddie Guerrero or vice versa. Eddie yeah, Guerrero yeah. might be. The, there is some intangible that AJ Styles brings to his matches that's really hard to pinpoint. I know. That makes him must see wrestling. You have to watch every match he's in, like especially like big singles matches. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, it's yeah. like when they toss him in these five man, six man, whatever matches, it's like, okay, he's going to do his thing. But when he's got a singles match, it's must see mm -hmm. wrestling. Eddie, I'm not going to say it's not, but it's not to the level that AJ Styles is. AJ Styles is such a transcendent, and well, there's he has, something tan. He has intangible a way to there. elevate the, his 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 opponents. Yeah, across the board, like like matches. in a way that I have not seen that you can't it's, see in anybody else. Shawn Michaels, maybe. Yeah, right, right. Shawn Michaels, they will get really good matches out of mm -hmm. people that you might not expect. But if you if you take a Shawn Michaels versus Diesel match. And you teleport AJ Styles back then and do an AJ Styles versus Diesel match. I'd probably rather see the AJ Styles. Maybe. I just think that to 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 a degree that I haven't seen with anybody else, that guy can bring other people to to a, to a great match. Mm -hmm. It's it's absolutely insane. Yeah, it's pretty um, incredible. Can't see anybody else. Yeah. Anyways, I love them both. Yeah, we they're both, both love great. Them both. They're both great. Thank you to Ron for Thank you, Ron. celebrating. Yes. AJ and Eddie Greer. Yes, with us. thank you very much. Yeah. Oh man, what a great question. Another question. This one's from Nick C. Let's see what he's got to say, brother. Hey Steven Larson, Nick C here with my first ever Matt Chat question, and I'll keep it very simple. Which version of Hulk Hogan was better? Was it Hulkamania or Hollywood Hogan? Have fun, guys. Thank you, Nick C. Thank you, Nick C. Oh, I gotta start. Yeah. Um, as much as I enjoy saying, I'm the man. You gotta say Hulkamania era Hulk Hogan is top Hogan. Yes. Um, I mean, without Hulkamania Hogan, I mean, who knows where the WWF would have ever gone? That's a good point. It could have been stuck as regional promotion, yeah. despite Vince's best efforts to make, to take it national. Yeah. He was um, uh, the transcendent wrestling star that has since become synonymous with the entire industry. If you ask anybody in the street, name a pro wrestler, they'll say Hulk Hogan. They'll say Yellow and Red Hulkamania Hulk Hogan. Um, I mean, we talked about it pretty frequently. Like looking back at it now, I don't really get the the appeal of it. The charisma, I guess, is kind of there. The character work is kind of there. It's kind of one note, but for the '80s, it worked. Yeah, it really worked for the '80s. Um, and yeah, that character kind of was on the decline in the early '90s when he retired or was kind of pushed out the door in WWE when Vince wanted to to institute a youth movement. New generation. Yeah, but he went to WCW and at least for a year or two. He was hot stuff all over again. People still ate up Hulkamania, maybe in smaller doses, but they still ate it up. Uh, Hulkamania Hogan was the one who was able to uh, 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 transition out of pro wrestling and doing some film work. As far as I know, Hollywood Hogan only appeared in one film, and that's Muppets from Space. Great cameo, mm -hmm, yeah. but still, Classic it cameo. doesn't, you know, like Hollywood, or sorry, Hulkamania Hogan, like predominantly on his IMDb profile, it's all from. Uh, 82, which was before Hulkamania proper. That's before he signed with WWE in uh, Rocky Three, mm -hmm. Thunderlips. Mm -hmm. But you go to No Holds Barred, uh, uh, Mr. Nanny, Suburban Commando, 
uh, those films. Classics Hall. Thunder in Paradise. That was a TV show. Yeah. Um, that's actually what he was doing in that. Uh, I think he was shooting that where in Florida somewhere, and that's how he transitioned to WCW. We right, yeah, mentioned. yeah, sure. Anyways, a vast majority of his movie work was done as Hulkamania Hogan. <laughs> I like how that's part of your argument. Well, I'm trying to be as all-encompassing as possible. <laughs> um, and yet, and one thing I always found interesting about Hulk Hogan mm-hmm. is like he would want to rough up the refs. You're a face. Why are you threatening the, to punch the ref oh, all the time? Man, yeah, I know. That's that always confused me. What's what's good guy about that? Oh, dude, because he look, it's it's not about good guy. It's about relating to the common people. Everybody wants to beat up authority figures. No, I understand that. Don't but tell me what to do. Don't tread on me. I guess so. <laughs> um, and the answer, come on, give me a break. The answer is Hollywood Hogan. And brother. Here's, wait, hold on, I'm not done yet. The reason it's not Hollywood Hogan is because for his entire tenure in WCW, well, not quite, from about '98 till. Uh, he left. Uh, it seemed like he was on uh, cruise control. He would politic his way to try to win matches that he should have lost storyline oh, wise. Yeah. Um, he was always about Hollywood Hogan first. He embodied his gimmick too much. Yes. He was all about Hogan when he should have been about the betterment of the business because in the end, if he worked to improve the business, he would, in the end, would have ultimately made more money if he would have elevated younger talents, up-and-coming talents. Just even put Sting over clean. Yeah. In the end, it would have called for a rematch. He could have made more money. Look, man, you know the you know what I love about Hollywood Hogan? He was real. We got to see the real Hulk Hogan. And boy, oh boy, did he politic his way to some ridiculous victories. And he didn't put anybody over except for like Lex Luger once on Raw. It was great. The, look, man, there... There was nothing more entertaining, but you said it yourself. Hulkamania Hogan was so, by the end of his tenure in WWE, and then by, you know, when he got to WCW, he had his little thing with Flair. It it was just so boring. Nobody wanted to see it. Hulk Hogan as Hollywood Hogan was so over over the top, ridiculous, villain, Terrible, but it was so entertaining. It was really bad. Because you would always just win, and he was so bad. And you would look at Nash and Hall, and it took everything they had not to just always be rolling their eyes at him, even though like they were friends with him. I never really understood that. He was like the worst thing about he was the worst possible thing about the NWO. Oh yeah. But like when when they talked about his promo stuff, like they wanted to make it like these sort of guerrilla style videos and Hogan would just be totally Hogan. And they're just like, dude, this isn't the way it works. But then they're all still like hella good friends and everything because I think they just understood that Hogan made them a lot of money. Yeah. I don't know. He was just, he was so entertaining. All that, I'm um, the man stuff. Having them bring in the ultimate warrior just so that he can get a win in on the warrior is so over the top ridiculous but it's so over the top funny because it's so Hogan wrestling. That's what he was all about. Never put anybody over, just go with Hogan. And he was able to live that character to, to a ridiculous degree. I thought it was great. It was so funny. And he had that ridiculous beard. And there was that weird time when he took like his own head out of a box. Yeah. And that was weird. And then he saw warriors reflection in the mirror, but no one else could see it. Right. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. He got to fight like Jay Leno. Like Jay Leno bested him physically at one point yeah. during that match. Yeah. Oh man, it was so great. It was so over the top stupid. It was because awful. I think he felt he tried to turn the NWO into a celebration of Hulk Hogan. Yeah. That's what he tried to do. Hogan did that. Bischoff tried to turn him into a motorcycle gang. <laughs> exactly, yeah. And that, Hall and Nash were just trying to compete with the WWF. They were trying to keep their jobs. Yeah. You know, they were just trying well, to take were, a company. They were trying to keep level. the NWO cool. Yeah, exactly. And you have Hogan and Bischoff taking alternate paths. The least cool guys. To sabotage the whole thing. <laughs> In the world. I don't know, man. I thought it was I thought it was hilarious. No, Hogan's awful. <laughs> Hogan is awful, but man, Hollywood I that was my first wrestling shirt, I think, was that Hollywood Hogan shirt. Even then, we knew it was so oh, bad. It was terrible. But, I mean, the funny thing about it was that it was so, like, there was something that was so, he had done such a good job. There was there was a part of the of the Hogan thing where you just knew that he was such a bastard politicker backstage. that that It's kind of the Roman Reigns, John Cena feud. It's like, okay, well, there's that element that people talk about. 
But now we're going to talk about it as part of a story that like people like the the people who matter want you to win, so you're going to win. Yeah, yeah. And that's why you win. Yeah. With Hogan, it was well, Hogan's not going to get let this guy get over. Mm-hmm. It's like by the time Goldberg came around, it was like, oh wow, that's why everybody tuned in because like, oh wow, Goldberg's the one guy that Hogan can't stop from from grabbing the torch from him. Mm-hmm. And now we're going to see that happen clean in the ring. We all kind of knew that was going to happen, mm-hmm. and it did. Mm-hmm. And it was such an amazing moment because oh my god, somebody even was able to. To, to stump Hogan's best efforts in politicking. when that's that's the craziest time. I mean, that's the craziest thing for somebody to do mm-hmm. is to out-politic somebody else. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know. It's Hollywood Hogan, man. He's the best. He was so bad. Yeah, it was pretty awful. It was pretty awful. All right, so we got a question now about different genres. Well, types of wrestling, styles. Genres. Yeah, of wrestling, so. yeah, styles, types, whatever. Uh, from our good friendo Manuel Garcia de Paredes. Let's see what he has to say. Hello, friendos. Manuel Garcia de Paredes here with a question for Matt Chat. Uh, Steven Larson, I want you to debate the following. What is better or what do you guys prefer? Comedy wrestling or wrestling based on drama? Steve, I would like you to debate that comedy wrestling is better. And Larson, I would like you to debate that wrestling based on drama is better. Uh, Also, Steve, you're never going to be able to bury me in bad wrestling. See you, friendos. Thank you, Manuel. Well, Manuel, I like to have a good laugh. Well, actually, here I'm going to say this about comedy wrestling. Because I actually... the, The most important thing to me about comedy wrestling the most important place it has in wrestling is this and Kenny Omega summed it up perfectly Mm -hmm. he said if I were to show anybody any wrestling match to make them understand or get into wrestling I would show them my match against I believe it was his match against the blow up doll it's either that or the ten year old or the ten year old girl match. I, I thought it was, which I think it's that one. Maybe it's a ten year old girl match where he fought a ten year old girl and he sold everything she gave him. Um you can have somebody watch a forty five minute Okada versus Omega match, and they might be into it, they might not be into it. You can have anybody watch a Yano match and completely they will understand what is going on because of the comedic element of it. He's not there when it's a serious matchup there's the element of well they're not really fighting so why am I really seriously getting into this? Why is why why should I care about the drama? If you have somebody new to wrestling and they're watching a comedy act, then that will allow them to perhaps enter the world of wrestling and start to understand the language of wrestling. Plus I just love Yano. I think he's hilarious. He low blows everybody, and he's hilarious. I like to laugh. I'm a funny guy. Laughing is best. Comedy wrestling. I don't like to laugh. I'm very serious. <laughs> You're a very serious person. Give me dramatic wrestling. No, <clears throat> me more than anything, I want a wrestling match to, 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 to make me feel something, whether that's uh, makes me feel like I want to laugh on those rare occasions I choose to laugh because it, it, I mean, it's like a willful thing on my part. I have to decide I'm going to laugh at this or I'm not going to laugh at this. <laughs> okay, Vince. <laughs> um, but uh, I'll go back to I mean, I get list countless matches in terms of dramatic storytelling that have elicited a reaction from me. Um, but uh, the one perhaps that was most visceral because I was there was Cena Styles at SummerSlam uh, 2016, where those two guys had 17,000 people in the palm of their hands with every, every near fall. Every high spot, everybody was on the edge of their seat for the entire duration of that match because of the story they were telling was true and right and dramatic. Um, the 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 primary reason the Okada Omega trilogy uh, is so great, yeah, the wrestling is good. They do some crazy stuff, but it's the storytelling, especially the second match where they're they're they got that time limit. They're buttoned up right against it. You got uh, 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 both of them on the verge of exhaustion trying to win that match. It's great storytelling. Um, I like comedy wrestling. I like Yano. You're watching the uh, Yano uh, highlight reel right here. Um, 
And uh, I, I think the, the the right answer is is regardless of the genre of wrestling, if we want to call it that, uh, there's there's room for it all in pro wrestling. There's room for comedy wrestling, for serious wrestling, for matches that do both. There's room for it all. Yeah, no, I agree with you. Like that, that shirt that uh, Ricochet has on his pro wrestling tee shop. Wrestling is an art, mm-hmm. and art comes in a multitude of varieties and variations. Yeah, and uh, despite what Jim Cornette says. There's not one true way to wrestle. Yeah. There's a wide variety of it, and enjoy what you enjoy. If you don't enjoy it, just don't watch it. If you don't want to see some guy grab Joey Ryan's dick and get flipped by it, then don't watch it. I think it's hilarious. I think it's great. I, I actually like fantastic. to laugh all the time. I try to laugh 15 times a day. Uh, do you count them? Yes. If you're low on your quota for the day. I make myself laugh. You make yourself laugh at the yeah. end of the day? What do you do to do that? Um, go on YouTube and watch something funny. <laughs> you watch some Benny Hill skits on YouTube? Yeah. Yeah. Some young ones? Yeah, maybe. Faulty Towers. Never really watched that. No? Maybe um, some uh, Chappelle show. Oh, there you go. Okay. Yeah. Monty I'll, Python. I'll generally do it. Yeah. yeah. Some Yes Prime Minister. Never watched that. <laughs> all right. Anyways, that's it for Matt Chat. I want to thank all of our patrons again at the $20 a month uh, 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 reward tier on our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash Stephen Larson. You too can send us a video question every week on Matt Chat. Thanks for watching. Until next time, we'll talk to you guys later. Bye.